Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and sitting next to me is DD Steve. Hey. Okay. Hey, we're back. Mailbag time. Well, because this is a mailbag, what that means is we are going to be answering your questions that we grab from that comment section down below. The very first person to get their question answered in these types of episodes is the winner of a VLOV, uh, which is our little lavalier meant for the live streaming content creator market. It's a very popular little thing. And it's a pretty nice little gift to get. Very useful right now. Yeah, very useful. So, Steve, what is the first question we've got up today? All right. First one's for you, Andrew. You ready? Shoot it to me. Christian Hodder asks... For those of us who want to teach online, how do you mic yourself for live Zoom? For both sitting in front of the computer mm -hmm. and for when you may need to back up and present something to the class. Okay, super easy. And actually, Christian, you're going to be able to do this because you want a VLOV. The answer is a VLOV. <laughs> what? So, no, uh, in all honesty, it is it is a VLOV because let's say you're teaching, right? you got a whiteboard behind you. You want to draw. It's got five meters of cable so that you can get up out of your chair, go back there, draw a little bit, come back, sit down while you're teaching without having to take your microphone off. And the whole time, doesn't matter the distance from your camera, the distance from here to here is always the same. That's why we really like lavaliers for this kind of purpose. Uh, what you and I are doing, we are stationary. We are in a locked position. I'm not going to be moving around. So a nice boom arm with a nice microphone works really well. Now, why the VLOV? Why not a wireless solution? I'm assuming because you are a Zoom user, that means you're doing something pretty casual and you don't want to spend a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? You're on a budget. This is something that you may be doing for fun. Maybe just that you want to do something for education purposes. Problem is a lot of cheap wireless may not have good range or reliability. And if you're trying to teach someone and it's crackling on you, I mean, you're not getting your message across. Whereas a hardwire lavalier, I mean, is just always going to work every single time you plug it in. And if you don't have like a return on investment here, I can't recommend something expensive for something like this. It's just not in my heart. I got to be practical about the situation. And a VLOV is the best solution. Unless it's like a fitness class and you're doing jumping jacks. Yeah, and then the VLOV is a bad solution. But talking about bad solutions, so I've got a question for you. And the segue. That's a Great segue. That's the bad solution is the segue. So uh, this is from Clement, and that is, what is some must-know terminology? Okay. The audio world is rife with a terminology that is uh, not... Wonky. Yeah. Yeah, a little wonky, not, not everyday usage. So some things that I think you should definitely look into are microphone pickup patterns. Mm -hmm. Those are often just long words. You're scared of long words. I hate long words. And they're good to know. Uh, supercardioid, hypercardioid, there's a lot of delineations between them. And when you're shopping for a microphone and trying to recommend one or just understanding how the whole thing works, sound science in general, it's very useful to know what all those mean and look like. So that everyone's on the same page. Exactly. I would also say that in post, there's a lot of terms that are seemingly interchangeable, but not at all. Like they sound similar, like low pass and low cut. Um, which are exact opposites. Exact opposites. So I think it's really good to have a very solid understanding of EQ terms, how all of that works, and, and what the practical application of each one of these words is. Mm -hmm. Now, what about some words in terms of like describing audio quality? That's a great point, uh, because often it is hard to describe what things sound like in a mutual language that we both understand. So there are a lot of these words that we'll use. Boxy, boomy, hissy. Muddy. Muddy. Yeah, there are words that kind of are, are accepted as the uh, the preferred nomenclature for what these things sound like. And they're totally useful. It's crazy how much time that can save you, especially in your post-production workflow. That's actually a pretty good answer. I think that's it. I'm gonna move on to the next one. You ready? This is from Verdant Visuals. I want to know, where is the funniest or strangest place you have ever hidden or concealed a mic on set? Well, I've used this example before in the past when someone asked me whether or not I've ever put a lavalier on a live animal. And that would be a dog. I put it on a dog's collar for a short film called Burbank. So the short film did not have a budget for Foley. Uh, they just could not do it. So it had to be recorded live. We've actually done a video up here again in those cards. We're gonna reference them. She had all those nice little gloves and everything that allowed you to really recreate exactly what a dog's nails sound like on hardwood. But this short film could not afford those kinds of, you know, post-production kind of shoots and all that kind of stuff. They were like, if we gotta capture it live, it's gotta be live. Otherwise we're gonna throw music over it. 
So I was like, cool, I'll put a lavalier right on the dog's collar. We'll tape up all the little trinkets and we put a body pack transmitter on the other side and let the dog just run around and have fun. We couldn't record it with a boom, which is why we had to use a lav because the dog was very, very afraid of my boom pole and the dead cat on it because it's fur, it's big, it's arching over it. It just was not having it. So we're like, cool, kill the boom, throw a lavalier, call it a day. And I think it's important to mention here, although sometimes this results in funny or strange stories that you have about loving people, this can be a sort of a serious situation and it's always good to be communicating with your talent about where these microphones are going, about people's comfortability levels, etc. Absolutely. People need to know where microphones are on a set because they don't want to say something that could be maybe not so favorable to people that are listening you know what I'm talking about. A hot mic is a bad mic. So it's good to tell people on set where all the hidden mics are. And that's actually kind of a good thing because at the end of the day, it's just, it's a nice courtesy. I got one for you though. Hit me. So this one is a little bit more complicated. And I think it's gonna require thinking hat. So here it is, it's from Tanner. And that is, should room tone be recorded in stereo or mono? Or is it a mix of both? With mono room tone recorded on the boom mic to fill in the gaps between the dialogue mix with a stereo room tone for ambience or a sense of space. I think Tanner nailed it there with the uh, kind of answering your own question, but I think it would end up being probably a mix of both. Traditionally, yeah. when you're recording room tone, you're gonna end up doing it in mono because it's hard enough to get the chunk of time that you need in your filmmaking day to record room tone in the first place. Everyone's already gonna give you a hard time for it. And if you have to then like fiddle with your settings, put your recorder in stereo or change over to a stereo track, it's way too much added time. Damn it, Fred! Now I get my tone. Everybody quiet on Damn the set. It. You wanna stop? Quiet on the set, let's get it. And you're gonna be using this recording to fill in the blanks basically left by a mono track because you're recording all of your dialogue in mono. Right, it would be weird if like all of a sudden if the gap had a stereo image to it where like the air conditioner is on the left right. and not on the right. But when we cut back to dialogue and it's just this mono track again, right? Right. And then the idea here of when would you be recording some sort of a stereo room tone? Maybe it's not room tone because as we've said, usually there's not much purpose to have stereo room tone. Yeah. Um, it's not a, a dynamic environment with things that are moving around and you would benefit from a stereo space. So it would pretty much be mono. But if you wanted to, if you had like a, you're doing a wild sound day or something, certainly you could play around with some things. Uh, we've talked about all sorts of interesting miking techniques, sort of an XY situation. Absolutely. You could do some ambisonics if you really want to like create some space of a room. And a lot of that I think is going to get added in post when you do sound design. Like let's say you have it in a restaurant and you have dialogue at a table. You may have extras in the background, but they're not going to be doing anything during the room tone take. So like there's no active sound being created that is purpose driven during a room tone take. Whereas you may have them do like some kind of a soundscape track afterwards, where it's just people shuffling around that you record that they can then add in over that dialogue and dial in the volume of like the claustrophobia of this diner restaurant kind of situation. And that might be in stereo, but like the actual dialogue and room tone, all mono. Yeah, so to flash back to the earlier question about terminology, I think that's something that's uh, worth differentiating, the difference between room tone and ambience. Because someone might use yep. them interchangeably, but in terms of practicality and onset experience, you are going to approach them differently. They're very different things, and when you know that, you record them differently. You see, you're right, it's a call back to terminology where everyone's on the same page. It's almost like we plan these things out. Sometimes it just works. Yeah, sometimes. Well, that actually does wrap it up. That is our last question for this episode. If you've got questions though, drop them down in that comment section below. We dive down into there all the time to grab these kinds of questions for these types of episodes. If you like this kind of content and you wanna see more of it, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna know when these videos drop every single week, you have gotta hit that bell for notifications. Go find us on all the social media platforms at DD Microphones. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on all of them. We're no longer on TikTok because we're dead with that. Done with TikTok. Uh, I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. He's DD Steve. Thank you for watching. Thank you.